and in three, two, one. Durball, Jeremy Durball, how goes it, man? Tiger, it's going great, man. With our che- cheers to the new studio. Cheers to the new studio with the with the fake sponsor of Liquid Death <laughs> to murder your thirst. Was that a free plug? Or you didn't get like ten cents for that free or anything? Plug. Ten cents, yeah, really. <laughs> ten cents a plug. No, we actually just got hooked deal. up with returning them all. Um, how's uh, how's your alcoholic uh, <laughs> COVID <laughs> break? Been going? <laughs> just immediately. <laughs> no, uh, I, I guess I should give a short intro back in. We're, we got a new studio. We're living right next door to Mark Fronmeyer. I was going to do his episode as the first one back, but with Delta coming in strong, mm. he uh, gave a mandate to two hundred employees that they can't be in a closed room, especially you know. So I'm like. Huh. Hard to like break your own rules publicly. Yeah. And then remain like, hey, but all you employees, but don't do this, but I'm going to publicly do it. So we did an outside episode yesterday and the dog barked and stuff. So I may not put it out. But mm. so the first episode back, I thought you, because you were literally, and the dog's barking even this episode. <laughs> it won't be heard. I don't think it'll be heard too much. But shouts out to the dog. Shouts, shouts out, out to, to the dog. I just, I just had a little conspiracy theory. Yeah. Can we sue Delta Airlines over the Delta variant? I'm sure. Because that seems like too much of a coincidence. <laughs> Like airline prices, uh, like the airline companies are struggling right now, so they need a little guerrilla marketing. Bad so they release it. <laughs> no, the real conspiracy theory that I've shared, maybe I don't even think I shared it before we went on a hiatus because the vaccines weren't out when I stopped the show, but the vaccines are just water. I swear to God. And now it's more real than no, ever. No, they're liquid death. They're liquid death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the real sponsors, that, uh, that, that Moderna and all that stuff. But I mean, like, honestly, it's like, okay, even if you get it, you have to live your life the exact same way as if you didn't get it. No, that's, that's exactly why I regret getting the vaccine. I know that's going to be a regret. really gr- like hard take for a lot of people to hear, but it's like, why the fuck did I do that? Yeah. Like, it, it's not – because I, I didn't need to do it. I'm healthy. I yeah. literally, I was just telling you, my blood test, the doctor with the lapis lazuli gauges. <laughs> Revert, refused to touch your balls. <laughs> he wouldn't even touch my balls because yeah. he could tell by looking at me that I was healthy. He's like, thumbs <laughs> up. You walk in, good He's enough. Like, this guy's got a pair on him. Yeah. I'm like, let's go. But no, seriously, I, I feel like I compromised my values getting the vaccine in a certain way. Oh, yeah. Because I wasn't worried about my health. I'm still not worried about my health. So why'd you get it? The coercion, man. Yeah. I gave into it. It's coming from my family, my Rough. friends. I can't even go to the fucking grocery store without like, hey, you bitch, get vaccinated. Yeah. Like they have it's everywhere. The announcements on the loudspeakers, and it's so creepy. <laughs> I hate it. Like I don't, I don't want propaganda telling me to stay six feet away from people when I'm just trying to get my bananas at the grocery store. I didn't get it purely because whenever a bunch of people tell me to do something, I do the opposite, which I have to, to the point where my brother's even getting married at the beginning of next month and like, oh, we'll have a big family dinner. And me and Kenzie and I are like, we're not going to go. <laughs> what the fuck? We're not going to go because what if we give you a breakthrough? And it's like, I don't know. It's just this weird thing. It's like, I think it's like the, the, the condensation of fear-based living of, oh, this disease that, I mean, realistically, how many 24-year-olds, or I guess you're 36 or some crazy yeah, old age. 40 going on. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the amount of people like my age who have gotten seriously hurt from it, it's like really low. And the vaccine doesn't prevent against like the long tail COVID because even if you're asymptomatic, you get it. So I'm like, it doesn't prevent against the things that I'm scared of, which is being tired all the time, which I am anyways. Honest to God, Kenzie, I've been sleeping like 10 hours this whole month. My aura ring's like, like it goes literally seven hours, six hours, six hours, 10. (laughs) I'm like, I've been sleeping more than I have in in all of recent history this month. I mean, maybe your weird sleep schedule is taking a toll on you. I don't know how that works. I know. Waking up at three. Going to sleep us. at 1 a.m. or whenever you go. Part of it's kind of fun, <laughs> and then you almost feel... T- <laughs> it's kind of nice, but then you also feel kind of trapped in a way, because it's like 11 a- uh, p.m., and you're like, I am not tired at all. I have the most energy I have all day. You start like cleaning and stuff, and you're like, I have neighbors, I guess, but you're blaring music. Mm. I guess I don't know what that's like, because I'm always drunk. <laughs> but <that time. laughs> Honestly, alcohol would be a way to keep a regular sleep schedule purely because, like, you come down from the alcohol and you're like, I'm fucking sleepy. Yeah, but it's such bad sleep. I think that's yeah. one of the main health things I need to work on is sleeping better. Jerking off and less, sleeping more. Well, no, I, I, I got the, the masturbation calibrated. Got it on lock. Yeah. I mean, that's not an issue. <laughs> that is not a problem. No, yeah, but uh, I just need to stop drinking and start sleeping better and... Probably most people listening to this. 
yeah. honest to God, I felt like we lived in a bubble because Kenzie and I like we'll drink like once a month or something, and we start like hanging out and like partying with people more. And we're like, oh, most people drink beer like every time they're around more than two people. They're like, yeah. where's the beer? To the point where we like cooked like a nice spaghetti dinner, but we didn't bring beer, and people are like, where's the beer at? And we're like, whoa. Well, they should have been asking, where's the the Cabernet Sauvignon? You need some red wine to go with the spaghetti. Yeah, probably, but they weren't. They weren't. I mean, they were fancy people, but surprisingly not. Shit, I'm not fancy at all. I drink three dollar wine. Do you really? Just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you, what do you do when you're drinking like tv like i swear to god the more like inebriated i am like if i'm high watching tv i enjoy it less now because i'm like you see the acting and it looks horrible you know mm. you know i do i mean a lot of things just any evening activities netflix video nice. games making music reading yeah. you binge me wait so you're making music when i last saw you so we've known each other like two years now right yeah closer to three it feels like nice are you gonna put out a full-length album or you're purely just like a mixtape kind of guy I mean, I'm honestly not super clear on what the difference between a mixtape and an album is. I guess some people say an album needs to have, like, some kind of concept tying it together. Yeah. So up to this point, I have pretty much just put out mixtapes. I think mixtapes is when you use other people's stuff, like, you don't own the legal rights to it, but a whole album. Like, that's why Chance the Rapper's first couple mixtapes, mm. they're using, like, other beats that he doesn't have the rights to, so it has to be a mixtape where he can't make music from it. I closed the door because I should have before. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> you just you're like a mixtape rapper this whole time. You're like, yeah, they're probably, like, interchangeable terms. <laughs> Bro, I don't, like, I'm not a musician. I was just talking to my friend about this yesterday. I know that sounds ridiculous because I make and perform music, but... You do perform, which is nutty. Yeah. I've never performed. I don't think I would ever have the balls to. Metolius Hemp CBD Saga uh, Joints. Thank Good you very hump. much. Spark one up, you fucking losers. Spark one up. <laughs> buy it. Go out and buy it. <laughs> no. I'll probably put a link in the description. I don't know if I'll mention it every episode. I probably will. I mean, you, you just need to do a little zoom in on the logo over there. It's a good idea, actually. I know. I could just have it everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I've never been very nervous about, like, performing or public speaking or anything, though. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm a really speaking. good public speaker. Public speaking, nothing in the, in, the, in the slightest in terms of anxiety, but, man, like, anytime my music gets played out loud remotely, just because it's, like, so much. Whereas, recently, so we <laughs> were, Kenzie and I got to hang out with Mark before he, his uh, Q2 reports, like, a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. So you didn't wind up doing the, the earnings call podcast? No, uh, <laughs> all probably because of Delta. But uh, he made a song to play at the end of the earnings call, and we like listened to it like five or six times on repeat. It just takes a second to turn off. Um, but the whole time I'm thinking like, oh my god, I don't like my singing that much that it would just cause mm -hmm. me so much of like. Wait, so like Mark wrote like, and recorded the song? Yeah, it, it was a cover of um, "You Got No One to Hold Them," but it was like "You Got No One to Fuck It" kind of thing. It was fun. Kenzie and I were going to do a bunch of them, but then we realized both of us are bad at singing in complimentary ways so that it sounds even worse when both of us are singing. It's a bummer. Huh. It's so bad. Dang. It's so bad. I'm getting into playing guitar again with the, the classical I picked up from Joe's house. Speaking of, Joe Mrushak's the epitome of like why we should get a different schedule. He's like, can you do a show earlier than two? And I'm like, I literally wake yeah, up at he one. He wakes up mad early, Joe does. Mad early. So he's, I'm like. He's checking his email at like 4.30 in the morning. So we're like opposite siding. And he's like, you got to do it earlier. I'm like, if I invite you over for a show at noon, I'm, there's a good chance I'll be asleep. And just waking up and be like, yeah, maybe, man. It has its tolls. I know. that's a, And that's a weird thing because you would be like conforming to the world if you did that and and I, which is not what you do but being in business like sometimes i sleep in a lot later than i want to mm -hmm. and i always am like god damn it the business world opens early early i gotta be up early it's it's a funny uh thing that i've noticed is i tend to wake up after markets have closed like luckily i don't like day trader in any sense oh stock markets mm -hmm. See, I, I sell the groceries, so I'm thinking, like, grocery stores. Market like, markets. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to do a plug? I don't think we've ever done video, so you've never actually been able to show your product. You sell dirty oh, balls. Yeah. Yep. It's like you saw the SNL skit with uh, Will Ferrell, and you said, Yep, sweaty balls. That's what I'm going to do for my living. I've actually never seen that skit, even though everyone You have not never me. seen that skit. It's a two-minute you. YouTube video. I, I just don't care about watching it but anyway these are not sweaty balls they're not dirty balls you gotta hold them up higher probably yeah, they're right there. they're just dirt balls they're dirt balls the most delicious vegan snack that's ever been created buy them online put them in your mouth go hike a freaking mountain or something can i eat one right now that one might step in the third shot yeah but absolutely. i'd like to try one right now and see how much i can speak with it because again oh yeah smack your lips gross everyone out i know see it might be like it's that and also the like, worst podcast ever it's just gonna ha i'm just gonna have to eat like a tiny little bit of it at a time 
No. If anything, one of the dirt balls in that bag is spiked with acid. <laughs> <laughs> one dirt ball in every batch oh isn't God. spiked with acid. <laughs> yeah. No. Actually, so, one of the best ideas I ever had for dirt balls was like every hundredth bag is just full of weed. Uh-huh. So like, <laughs> you go funny. to the store asking for your dirt balls, and you're like, "What the fuck? This is full of." Hindu Kush or You spend something? like 11 bucks on a bag of dirt balls and you get like $200 worth of weed. Yeah, Score. honestly, like, that's like three quarters of an ounce almost. That'd be a lot of weed. Yeah. My friends did fill one of these bags up with weed that they grew once. Yeah. And it lasted a long time. Weed lasts, it lasts about a year before it goes bad, before it's like stale weed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm kind of worried because I have all these um, these joints, these CBD joints, and I'm like, I might be smoking them in a year from now. I'm like, hopefully they'll be okay. They're decently airtight, but man, oxygen just fucks up everything, doesn't it? Fuck you, oxygen. But everything <laughs> except us, like, is like, I mean, bread, you name it. It's literally like any amount of oxygen is like, it's going to go bad. Yeah. Whereas that's us, why I like, don't eat bread anymore. You don't eat bread? No. I mean, except unless I'm going to Chiba Hut or getting a burger somewhere. Nice. Kenzie doesn't like Chiba Hut. She's uh, Jimmy fuck? John's <laughs> over Chiba Hut. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing, isn't it? I'm about to flip this guy down. Yeah, table imagine over living Kenzie. with her. I'm like, I, you I don't, don't understand. I have a deep, long standing beef with Jimmy John's. As really? everyone should. Yeah. Why? Because they make shitty subpar sandwiches. Thank you. Oh, and good. and Thank someone you. told me something about the Jimmy John being like some kind of sex creep. I, I haven't looked into that. It's not really as important to me I think as the sandwiches. his whole thing was that he shot a rhino or something, <laughs> but it was, like, endangered and it was old. Yeah. So I'm like, that. I'm not going to hold that against him. The whole point is they're shitty. Like, they're they're worse than Subway. And Subway is already, like, oh. at this level that I don't really think I'd eat because it has a Subway taste. Literally everything they have, it's, like, Subway. Like, in, Yo, what is that? What they is go to the taste? chemists and, like, hey, we just need a signature flavor. It doesn't have to taste like food. We don't care what it it's is. Just gotta ta- it doesn't have to be good. We, but it just doesn't lettuce, taste like Subway. <laughs> The, the sesame seeds, literally everything that we have has to taste like Subway. You need to walk in blindfolded. If you go blind, you still need to be able to hunt down a Subway. That's the most important part of our business model. I saw, a really, blind people. A, I saw a really interesting video the other day about why Subway struggled so much business-wise. And it's – I'm not going to explain it all, but it's very – it's interesting how there's such big differences on the back end between all these different fast food franchises. It's crazy. Just in like – the amount they charge to open a franchise. Oh, like, yeah. The rules on how you can do it. Kenzie and I were just watching about that McDonald's where it's like a $1 million, uh, what do you call it, franchising franchise? fee. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like McDonald's is almost just a real estate business at this point. I'm like, damn. <laughs> it always was. Yeah. It well, seems like all smart things are. 2006. People... Like, all, I mean, people say Scientology is <laughs> just a, a real estate business. It like, seems like most rational things use money, buy up more real estate, and then it's like all everyone our age is like, rent till you die, dumb <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. I, I got to own some land. All I want... That's the dream. I figured out I don't want to be fabulously wealthy. All I want is a little bit of land. You just want to be fabulous. A cabin in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the wealth. And a tricked out van home. I just want to be fabulous. That's funny. Some people I know bought 30 <laughs> acres over in Bend. And you go there and it's gorgeous. But at the same point, it's like, there's no water here. And there's a deep fear of being in a place that's that arid where I'm like... Mm. Yeah, but what if, like, society breaks down? Like, the first thing that would happen is no water. You're done for really soon. Whereas, like, here in, like, Eugene, there's literally lakes and reservoirs and rivers close by as long as you have, like, yeah. probably I mean, a gun or a spear of some sort. If you can afford land, you can probably afford water storage. Or one of these things that I've been getting way into. Kenzie got the practice <laughs> ones. And I'm, I, Those I, are fun. I know. I just got one of the actual, like, violent ones, one of the sharp ones. But now I want two because I learned how to do it with both hands simultaneously. Keeps hitting my Apple Watch, though. I've actually gotten scratches on my Apple Watch since having it. No scratches on it before owning one of those, though. You should sue the knife company. I probably should. I should just learn how to sue people. I mean, <laughs> some businesses are made on buying real estate. I should have a business purely based on suing people. I mean, you know, you could just, like, go into supermarkets and walk straight toward the wet floor sign. I guess if they put the sign up already, that protects them from How fucked up was of a challenge was that, that people just grab gallons of milk and just throw them in the air? Do you remember that being a thing? Yeah, at some point. I mean, what's going on with you? Was that during? That was just during this past year, wasn't it? No, that was like the milk three years jug ago. Challenge You're old, remember? Jesus, man. I'm only forty. Okay. I'm not <laughs> that. <laughs> that was a trip hearing that you're 28, because I had always been like, oh, Durball's like my exact age. He just went to like Churchill or South or something. No, I I, I moved here three years ago. So pretty much. Oh yeah, you're a California. What do you call it? implant? California yeah, plant. 
I'm an implant. Most people don't go to like <laughs> they implanted me right poorer here. places. <laughs> 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 they implanted. Most people are like, I'm gonna move to California, but you're like, I'm getting out of here. Fuck. You me. don't have the California vibe that most California people do, where I don't want to be around them though. That, that's why I got out of California. It's because I grew up in NorCal, and NorCal is a lot more like Oregon than like it Humboldt? is like not quite Humboldt. It was Santa Rosa, hmm. which is like where it transitions from the Bay Area to NorCal. Nice. And I would always go to all the Boy Scout camps and summer camps up in Mendocino. Get raped? I was doing the raping, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the reason they went out of business. <laughs> oh, man. That shit makes me sad. That's oh, crazy. Back before COVID, when I was like, oh, I'm going to start doing stand-up, and then it completely closed down. I was like, one of the jokes was going to be like, to get your Eagle Scout badge, you have to get raped. Because, I mean, they literally went out of business because they had so many lawsuits. That's absurd. No, and here's what I want to say. There in the <laughs> in the Boy Scout organization, there are a lot of Catholics. Hmm. I feel like that's all that needs to be said about yeah. that. So it's just an extension of the church rape that's happening. That's my theory about Speaking it. I honestly of, haven't looked into it at all. Why didn't we wear the the Pope and the the, the religious outfits for this show? Next time you come on, yeah, we got to wear the crazy. I outfits completely next time. literally before we did the uh, before you got here, Kenzie was like, "When are we going to start fucking with Gus?" I'm like, "We should make it like three or four episodes in of like decently regular before we really start fucking with people." Yes, and it helps to put your plans out on air before you start fucking with people, people. who come on this show don't listen to it before how do you think eric andre's show stays in business no one True. watches his show before they go on <laughs> yeah. there are all these famous people and they and their agents and managers don't even watch the eric andre show they're like yeah we'll book him and then these famous people show up and they just get pranked the whole time i bet at least one of the managers was just like really mad at their client and they're like i'm gonna put them on this shitty I'm show still getting they're not gonna enjoy this at all yeah <laughs> fuck this person but, I mean, it's all these CBD joints, man. That's why you didn't remember the costumes. <sighs> CBD mine, man. If anything, I might start taking a little bit of weed edible before shows. I've had this weird thing getting back into the show. like, Because the first like dozen or so episodes sucked of my original audio-only show. And then I got like into this really nice groove. And ever since I'm trying to get back into it, I'm like, I'm out of the groove of talking to people. Because, I mean, all of COVID, I've been stuck talking to one woman. <laughs> <laughs> I need another man am I okay just to have a man to talk to more often no um, I mean, you, can, you can pay me like 15 bucks an hour I'll just sit around and you can talk to me <laughs> that'd be a hilarious job you literally a full time job I have like three different clients and I just go spend three hours at each of their house every day they yeah, just I, enjoy talking to me that's a thing though like it, it, within like the sugar baby sugar daddy realm of things Go on. <laughs> Yo, like, how much do you know about? <laughs> there, there's a whole, a surprising amount, honestly. There's a whole spectrum of like full on like lifestyle prostitution, or yeah. just literally just like, hey, I'm going on a trip. You want to keep me company? I'll pay you to just like go on this trip with me. It's lifestyle prostitution. Like you prostitute out your way of li- like. I, I mean, go that, and that, teach someone how to live how I do. Like literally just paying someone to live in your house so you can fuck them. Like. That's one genre of sugar daddy, Sounds sugar like baby relationship. Well, yeah, if you want to get cynical about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this, uh, yeah, I mean, like, everyone always says the joke, like, free sex is the most expensive sex you'll ever have. Like, have you never heard that? that Very make, famous saying. That doesn't make any sense. Like, you're married, and then, like, you also pay for, like, her car. Like, like, like a classical marriage kind of thing. If anything, it's probably switching the other way. And most guys I know are very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, <laughs> like most women are way more go getters than men these days. Because a, a bunch of yeah, guys that... were like, let them, let them do it. We're done. Bro, masculinity is dying. There in a good way. No, I mean you're a perfect example way. of it. I, I'm a decent <laughs> example of it. I have the death of masculinity. <laughs> That's the example. The name of this episode: Dirtball and the death of masculinity. <laughs> I'm okay with that. But no, there is like you know, there's a concerted war on masculinity in the culture. Yeah, like. But masculinity is good as long as you're a good man. Yeah. And, and you're not doing bad things. Yeah. It's also way too fucking easy to be lazy. Mm-hmm. Easier than ever. Mm-hmm. Like, to point out, I don't know, it's this weird thing where all that I hear boomers saying is, like, nobody's working and nobody's doing these jobs. And it really is this thing. I'm like, if you don't have to, why would you be working? Like, if you can find other ways of living that you enjoy, why would you go work minimum wage jobs? It's like... It, that should be a good sign that these minimum wage jobs aren't being filled. It's like, cool, people are somehow managing to survive while not selling eight hours of their day away for like a hundred dollars. Yeah, totally. Except, I mean, I mean, I think I've heard Taco Bell and shit. They're paying like seventeen 14, an 20. hour. I've heard Holy seventeen an hour shit. at some places because they're desperate. We start going and working at Taco. No, Bell. and it's a terrible thing actually because everyone's lazy, 
everyone's depressed, and so they just want to eat some shitty food to take their mind off things, which leads more to their depression and We've everything. We've been eating more, more crunch wraps than ever in our lives. Bro, it's a, you're part of the problem. We are part of the problem. You're, you're part of the reason they need to pay people 17 an hour to sling crunch wraps. It's crazy. If you ever see them working, like, you kind of look back there, it's, like, so autonomous. You're, like, hopefully kind of counting the days until... Did I leave my phone right there? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> counting the days until... Uh, it's just automated the way and it's like hypothetically it'd be so cool if everyone's free time just got like cool robots did all the mandatory stuff you guys just get to chill and make art and sell your dirty balls and your dirt balls i'll pay it some respect once <laughs> sell his dirt balls jeremy dirtball cummings snack i mean the name there's just come in the name and you That's sell beautiful. dirt balls it's yeah. just this, it's this beautiful <laughs> mix of every storm. time i think about it, i'm like does he laugh while ma- naming that? <laughs> no, that's one of my that that's like a compass I use to guide my decisions. Is if it makes me instantly crack up, I'm gonna go that direction. It's actually a pretty good way. It's kind of the way that Kenzie and I are doing our lives as well. That's good. I mean, you you, you got to follow what makes you happy because if, if something makes you happy, chances are it'll make somebody else happy. Agree with that. I've got to ask: Is this a different experience than audio only? Yeah, I like being on camera. You do? Yeah. I uh, I was actually looking at my broadcast news demo reel from college the other day. Nice. I'm I'm a good like TV news anchor. Yeah? Yeah. And I, I like being I on camera because I'm so fabulously good looking. <laughs> Absolutely. Gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, you were made for camera. With my musty ass beard and weird hair. It's funny that you should Perfect. talk wearing a mask, but I'm finally reading your, your shirt through your beads. It says, wash your damn hands. Are you you, you should wash your, your hands, hands after you go pee. Uh, always after I poop. Sometimes after I pee. Is it sometimes? Is in just if someone else is around? <laughs> well, like if I if I'm at work or if I'm gonna be like bringing dirt balls to to the stores, I'm gonna wash or my hands. Or cooking them. Well, I don't cook them anymore. That's oh the yeah, thing. but when you did cook them, yeah, you nah. <laughs> I mean, no, they, it's warm enough. In the kitchen down in Cottage Grove, we had very strict health and safety protocols. Nice. Has to be an all stainless steel kitchen and all that jazz. Mostly stainless steel. A lot of stainless steel. It was a really, it was a cool, funky old building down nice. there. But so, to, to jump back, just so people know, uh, right when I get this all set up, you came on and you did a half hour, 45 minutes to like, I mean, that camera kept going off, like just random things were wrong. Yeah. And then uh, Tom, and the audio was way off. Thomas came on and I didn't edit his episode for a day because I saw it and it looked like it was all clipped. And I was like, I wasted two people's like time. But it turned out okay. Like the audio is like it's it's pretty Gucci now. Um, completely spaced out where I'm going. I, part of me honestly thinks that CBD does change the way I think. It makes me yeah. like more kind of like just like chilled out. It, it might not be does. the perfect thing for like early <laughs> in an episode. This might be an end of an episode. I think for like now. halfway through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, of course, CBD changes the way you think. But I don't feel it. Maybe because I'm kind of numbed out from other strong substances. Mm. Very valid thing, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. You gotta get some of those cough buttons. Nah, people <laughs> like the sound of coughing. Yeah. You should just have a cough drop. I give you. It's not good to over edit podcasts. I think no. you need to keep some human idiosyncrasies in there. It's a big part of it, and also same with like when I was getting like the TikTok job. They're like, you gotta get a gimbal because if you like do videos that are like shaky, and I'm like, dude, nobody likes footage that's perfectly like level. You like okay. First off, it's an ad. Second off, it's like overproduced. It has this weird look. When things look too nice, you just kind of don't. You just skip through them. I don't know if you if you're a TikTok guy. Sort of. Well, I mean, I, I use Instagram Reels more than I use TikTok. Really? Which is Instagram the, Reels is mostly just TikTok. Thing. Like, do you see so like, much the, of it is just screenshots? So much of, of it. <laughs> like literally, the most Instagram Reels are just like they have the TikTok logo going around. Like, why would you use that? Better algorithm for what you want or something? It's just more exposure. It's like what I was mm-hmm. saying with the. The TikTok videos with your company. The other day. I absolutely should. Yeah, I mean, because be you just want a idea. bigger digital footprint. I pitched it. I'm like, you guys should do it for Twitter fleets. You guys should do it for Facebook story, Instagram story, and Instagram reel. And they're like, they're taking away Twitter fleets. They took them away already. Yeah, depressing. Not so really. Just pitched. I liked it. I never watched them, <laughs> and I never made one. <laughs> no, I'm not on Twitter to look at things. All, all the I social medias are kind of just becoming the same thing. Like Twitter and or TikTok and Instagram are kind of becoming the same. Snapchat and now Twitter, like they're all kind of like meshing into this one thing. Yo, and I realized something about that the other day. Yeah. These companies are blatantly copying each other's features, and not like not trying to hide it. And there are no legal repercussions. Yeah. That means anyone can do that. Yeah. If I wanted to start my own fucking TikTok, I could probably just tweak one little line of code 
and then it's a tech legally speaking a completely different you app. You just change the color scheme and the logo just a little bit to like a dirty exactly. nut sack, just <laughs> dipped, dipped in chocolate. Dick talk. <laughs> Dick talk. <laughs> it's funny. I was honestly almost even pitched it to Joe when Joe was like kind of bored like a year ago. And he's like, does anyone have ideas? I was going to be like a porn of TikTok. It's got to happen. Where it's just TikTok clips of porn. So many people just watch mm. the app for people dancing anyways. Like, not going to name the person. I mean, a but lot so of it is just softcore porn. Yeah. Like, someone TikTok. literally texted me. They're like, they don't stop dancing until you scroll. I'm like, well, that's disturbing. That sounds creepy as fuck. <laughs> but, I'm like, but I'm like, I'm like, my, I'm trying to curate mine to as most, like, as meme as I can. Like, jokes, memes. Like, if it makes me laugh in, like, 10 seconds, I'll give it a like and stuff like that. But I'm like... It seems like all like social media is just starting to make this weird turn where it's just like, it's so bland now. Like there's so many like hustler, like there's like, you can put almost everything into these boxes. It's not like the super nuanced thing where it's like, wow, look at all these different creators who just genuinely enjoy it. They're like, they know the algorithm to how to get the most views. And mm -hmm. they just like, if you ever go to the top TikTok people, it's literally the same song with like three different outfits. And it's like, this is weird. Yeah, That's why I stopped watching Instagram reels. Like I, I just went on Instagram for the first time in about two weeks on monday yeah yo because like you said it's it's the same songs it's like oh no oh, yeah it's that one it's the <laughs> she a runner she a track star it's like there's three songs actually a good singer <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. i should be singing not you guys you should be <laughs> I mean, i'm a musician i make music i know i said i'm not a musician earlier but rapper <laughs> we learned cigarette daydream by cage the elephant we're gonna make like a fub version of it and then we realized it's it took all the fun out of it as soon as we're like, oh, we'll like film it naked, just strumming and like playing on the fuv, and like we immediately were like, we're not gonna do this. I pitch stuff like that a lot. Honestly, the most recent idea that I, it could exist is someone on a like, like it'd be like playing polo on a, the roadster, but then you could at least have like a photo of it on a shirt, like right there. Ooh, that's fire! Man. I know. So it's like, why don't they do this? Like, someone should just be turning ideas into things. But the more that I've learned about, like, bigger companies, it's like, man, the machines work slow. It's not like, hey, I have a fun idea for a song or whatever you do. Like, or like, hey, I want to make a kiwi uh, curcumin flavor. Mm -hmm. You can just do it. Cardamom. Cardamom. But imagine <laughs> you had, like, literally hundreds of people that you have to convince and then thousands of shareholders that care what mm -hmm. you do. It'd be like, whoa. Bro, that's why, like, once I have some employees, I don't want to be in charge. I want people who yes. are just going to do shit. And anytime someone's gotten involved with me, that's what I do. I just say, like, all right, yeah, do stuff with the social media. Make it happen. I literally brought this up recently. Someone's like, well, what are you going to do when you're in charge of people? I'm like, I don't ever want to be in charge of people. And they're like, you don't want to lead? And I'm like, no, I have literally no interest in micromanaging people all the time. Why would – like, well, that's most people's leadership goal. Leadership is not micromanagement. No, but in a lot of companies it is. I guess you probably haven't, like, worked – like – Seeing how a lot of companies work, it seems like, yeah, there's a hierarchy. Get it? I have three people below me. And it's like this weird – people who, like, see power as, like, a metric for how well they're doing in life, mm. specifically the power of how many people are below them in a job, is the most sick like, – you can almost visually see a slime around those people. I'm like, yeah, I'm good, though. Thank you, though. Well, and it's people who don't know how to create their own sense of power and identity. So they need some external structure to, like, mm -hmm. make them meaningful. That's Pure replicators. Totally. Yeah. Nailed that on the head. There's this whole thing, and I share with almost everyone. It's like the one article I share, probably most often. Um, and it's about how, like, the plot, the universe's plot. I would almost smoke another one. Would you be up for another one? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's probably a lot on your throat. <laughs> I, I finished mine a minute ago. Um, it's kind of about, like, how the whole, like, the universe's plot is these pure consciousness creating machines. Like, you created a product. You, like, made zero to one, as, as Teal would say it. Um, whereas most other people will just like replicate and like subsist and replicate at all costs. So like have kids mm. and just like, no matter what your quality of life is, continue living and reproduce. And it's like this, like pure replicators versus people who are like, Oh, I want to be at a better state of life mm. rather than anything else. And how it's like, that's what like a lot of the government is, is just like, just allow pure replicators to survive and, and, and subsist on society. It's a weird thing to look at, but, like, it's a well-written article that I like that maybe I'll put it in the description. Huh. I don't know if I'm going to be a description person yet. That's interesting. It sounded, when you said pure replicators, that sounds like the the globalist elites call those people useless eaters. Do they really? <laughs> in, according to the conspiracy forums on the internet. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure there is one clip of, like, Prince Andrew saying that. They call people pure eaters? No, useless eaters. Oh, useless so people eaters. People who add nothing to society and just consume. 
There's some truth to it. <laughs> no, I know some useless eaters. Like my yeah. my old roommate back in San Jose. Absolutely. You? Me once a month. <laughs> yeah, I mean me definitely sometimes. I oh have. yeah, I think all of us. Sometimes you just get in this like zone where it's like my belly's full, but my mouth just wants to keep eating yeah. something new and unique of a flavor. It's like yeah. oh, like I mean I'll I'll like eat a pickle and then immediately an ice cream bar. Like flavor matching does not matter to me. Kalamata olives immediately followed by tofu. I bet you could make some dank pickle ice cream. Because there's, so there's cheese and corn ice cream Kenzie's in the Philippines. Hard over here. We've Pickle been ice all cream. dill everything. <laughs> We've been eating dill chips. We've been as much oh. dill as we can get into our lives lately. Mm. Straight to the vein. I'm going to have another <laughs> Metolius Hemp CBD cigar. It's funny. Or not cigar. They pre-roll. do make cigars. It's funny. This is one of the last Yeah, the canagars are nice. I like the canagars more than the, the pre-rolls. The canagars are very nice, but the whole thing is they create so much smoke for a room like this. Like, we played poker, uh, and yeah, we took we, some footage, and it was like... their whole house. It was out. literally the entire house was caked in smoke. Like, Canagars are w- way better for outside. They're wonderful inside if you don't have a deposit, mm-hmm. um, but we do here, yeah. and I'm doing my very best to not lose the entire deposit. <laughs> Shout out to Tiger's landlord. You Shout are out a, to my landlord. You're, you're a hero. You're a hero and an angel. She takes our whole deposit. You are no longer a hero and an angel. <laughs> You go downstairs and there's already an eviction notice. There might be. <laughs> we care. Well, the whole thing is we moved in here. It reeked of dog. Like, the last people to live here literally had a dog and a cat. And it reeked of that. So I'm like, okay, that's, what that's if it's way just, worse than pot smell. What if it reeks in a different way? Is that really the end of the world? She didn't clean the carpet yeah. between us. We're not, we're not going to call anyone out, but yeah. No. Shitty. That said, she just did fix our shower. Like, literally, like, right before you came over, someone came. So she's so back to being nice. an angel. She's back right. to being an angel. It's a tight line. It's a thin, thin line. But yeah, what do you got going on day to day, muchacho? Because well, you don't cook them, you don't deliver them. Yeah, you just make music. It's, it's a no. I mean, I still I focus most of the morning on dirt balls. Generally, visiting the stores and checking on stuff, putting out Facebook ads, nice brainstorming new flavors coming up with content ideas, managing the website. There's still a lot of the stuff to do. The stores don't let you know when they're low. You have to go to the stores and restock them yourself? Some of them do. Mm. The thing about grocery stores is people do not realize how hard these guys work, these men and women and gender-neutral no individuals in the grocery stores. It's so much fucking work to yeah. manage a grocery store. I bet. You have, even Kiva has, I, I think, four or five different sections each with its own different manager. There's like a produce manager, a deli manager, wow. package goods manufacturer, supplement manager. Bulk foods. Yeah, exactly. The bulk section probably mm-hmm. has its own leadership hierarchy. So I I don't even mind they don't hit me up because these the people managing these stores have so much on their plate. Yeah. And it's as that was something I learned from Micah L. Conan, I think, at one point. He's like the Joe Marushak of food nice. in Lane County. Yeah. Um, but like make it easy. Is he a sore food guy? He was an advisor to sore foods, nice. but, uh, everyone was just always telling me in the grocery business, you got to be persistent. You got to keep maintaining relationships with the stores. Yeah. And that's hard. I, I have a hard time managing relationships in general, not just business ones. Yeah. That, that's one of the biggest hurdles is like, I'm usually very laid back mm-hmm. in my relationships. Aloof. It's, Aloof is a maybe. I, don't know. I, I just don't feel the need to be all up in my friend's business all the time. Yeah. But I do need to be up in the store's business all the time. Yeah. In the right way. It's a tough place. Where to I'm be. not like, I can't demand too much of the manager's time or like expect that they'll take every phone call. Well, and I it comes randomly. back to this thing that I learned, uh, what Kenzie and I both learned at some point is like, <laughs> make it easy for people to help you. Like, like we learned mm-hmm. it just by like asking for a massage, but just like making it really hard. It's like, oh no, like, have like make it really easy for someone to say yes to help you yeah and it has such a higher success rate than just like being like just like a really cold pitch of someone and be like yeah they'll do all the work for me it's like people are fucking busy people's like brothers are getting like, sick or their wives are you know yeah, it's like totally. so many Even things going on in people's lives exactly like the people's outside of work makes their job just so much more convoluted i'm like holy shit that's mm-hmm. what i'm starting to realize i'm like just pretend like someone's like best friend died every day and like when you're pitching something or like reaching out to someone and someone like forgets to text you back i'm like there's a million reasons that it's worthwhile for someone to not write you back but mm-hmm. so many people get so butt hurt they're like oh, i'm the friend who reaches out all the time yeah and i hate that like the expectation that everyone's gonna text you back 
just because you texted them, like yeah. you're entitled to other people's attention. Yeah. I don't like that. It doesn't work well. That's said, I think you always text back. <laughs> I generally do. I definitely miss some texts. Yeah. Like I get so surprisingly regularly, my friends will text me just like, hey, I saw you driving by. It's like cool. Cool. What do you? Am I supposed to respond something to that? Like I don't know if it's. Am the I, def- is that me? Am yeah. I- <laughs> yeah. It might be the definition of me getting old, but I don't like seeing people I know in public anymore. Like it's getting to the point where I'm like, I had a plan. That's not old. That's antisocial. Is that's it? Because I'm like, <laughs> like the last thing I want to do when I'm like out and about is like stop and have an impromptu conversation with someone who I'm like, well, I'm not hanging out with you right now. Get the hint. <laughs> it's like it's just like this weird thing or like just saying hey but like my favorite thing is when they also just cross you by and they're like oh hey and you just keep walking you're like person went up Perfect. in my books <laughs> those are my favorite people like nice we know each other let's all acknowledge that and then just keep going yeah. about our lives i think that that's just your inner ron swanson that's my take on that would you do one of these shows on mushrooms someday oh hell yeah you would let's do one on every drug not every drug except heroin except i'm never MMA. doing heroin did you say MDMA? Yeah, because nope. you can only take it like once every three months, and I wouldn't want to waste it on a podcast. Mm. I'd want to like use it a good to its full. Like, there's some yeah. drugs that I wouldn't purely because I'm like, those sound like peak experiences not to be had. We're just like sitting here, just like kind of <laughs> grinding our teeth. Like, I fucking love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast end. That was so great. You listen back to just us like looking at each other, dead uh, silence. That'd be another problem. I love you. you. Would- you would not have a good sense of like the quality of the conversation. Kenzie's just sitting there like like switching back the cameras really quick. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, it might not be the most interesting show. I was on That'd mushrooms. Be hilarious. Not. I've only done one show on mushrooms, and the person's face was tripping me out the whole time. Like the area under their eye, like just the perspective of it. I was like, yeah, man. I was really confrontational. It was not a great you were episode. Confrontational on the mushrooms. Surprisingly, <laughs> like anytime they pitch something, I was like, I don't know if that's true. I was like, I was pitching that forest fires weren't bad things. <laughs> like space might not be real. Like all these weird things. I was like. <laughs> And then I finished the episode and I was like, I don't think I'll do that again for a while. <laughs> no, I mean, it would have to be just a little bit of mushrooms. I'm not trying to go on a hero trip and record a podcast. Two, 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 two grams. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. right? Just like, if, like, we're definitely tripping. Like, more or less anything, I haven't seen this table moving since I've made it. Yeah. And I'm like, more than anything, And this table seems... needs to be stared at on drugs. It so. does. That's what it's made for. It's literally just... It's like a, a cosmic, psychedelic ocean of bliss and new understanding for the people who can't see the table that's what it looks like i think it's in the master shot it wasn't so we're slowly changing the cameras again this is the first episode back uh right when i started the show i said this show doesn't have to be good for about 100 episodes and right near the end i started really liking the show now that i took a break it doesn't have to be good again for about 100 episodes we got it we got the same runway yeah we got the same runway so <laughs> around episode 225 250 i'll be like oh shit it's go time but it'll take me a while to like get my my talking legs back Oh man, yeah. I I was like, listen to the way I'm stuttering right now. I'm like, I I I I was listening to the podcast I recorded earlier today, and I I know I said I'm a great public speaker earlier. But you sucked. I mean, I was just studying stuttering a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of ums and. We just stopped being social for a year because of COVID. We pretty much had like a small group of friends that we talked to, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, let's just be fully social again. I'm like, I'm getting like awkward in a lot of situations where I'm like oh, weird, like, I definitely lost an aspect of me that was, like, really honed into, like, oh, being really socially mobile with people and, like, kind of, like, a Mm -hmm. chameleon-esque. But now I'm, like, it's just this weird thing where I've spent too much time just with the same people or the same, like, playing a video game or, like, listening to music, TV show. I'm, like, you really got to, like, use it or lose it with with just talking to people as well more than anything. Yeah, with anything. It's a a skill. It's It's like working out your muscles just for social interaction. Yeah. The thing I keep running into is I have forgotten so many people's names. And it's really unfair because everyone calls me Dirtball. Everyone. And that's easy to remember. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, you're like the fifth Joe I've forgotten this week. Shout out to Joe. It's kind of the, the life spirit I of too. Joe. It's funny. I kind of got it. Kenzie for a while. She'd introduce herself to a lot of people as I'm Kenzie or Mackenzie. And I met a couple other people who were like, I don't even remember the guy's first name. He's like this. Or you could just call me Ginger because he was like really red beard and hair. Mm. And I'm like, I already forgot your name because you gave me options. And one of the options was kind of demeaning. And yeah, I'm I could like, call you Greg. Yeah. I could call you Ginger. Ginger. And it's like, like a lot of times, like if you give people two options, they're like, one was already as much like effort as I was going to give you. <laughs> I already met and you're already making me t- like make decisions. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, I have to make a decision. I have to work to remember two names now. 
it's just not worth it. For a while, I had this Google Docs spreadsheet. I still really? have it. Yeah, of like people's names. Google Sheets. Where I met them. Wow. A little description. That's psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy <laughs> Roosevelt did it. Did he really? Yeah, did that was really? where I got the idea. It was in... I think it was in How to Friend How to Friend Meets and People Influence, that book. How to Meet Friends and Influence People. I have <laughs> yeah. that book right there. Uh, someone suggested that I read it. He, said, he gave me that and then a book called uh, The Celestine Prophecy. I just finished it last night. I stayed up, hmm. took a little grit, hung out, finished the book. It was okay. Little it was grit. like a fiction book and the whole time was like, man, this is little so grit. enjoyable. Um, but it didn't have a good ending, like Gritty Kratom, because we've been brewing it. like. Which is how you're supposed to take it. Like You're supposed to have leaves and brew it like tea it's kind of like so. coffee like tea or coffee is like yeah. the actual way to make it but then if you're just a neanderthal who's like why would i want to wait 45 seconds for water to boil we just drink grit or i just drink <laughs> it occasionally so um but i'm falling back into bad habits today is day two of no jewel i mean when mm. you did the tester episode wasn't i taking like hitting the jewel the whole time i think so at least a couple times the whole time nicotine i mean i guess you had a vape too you haven't hit it this whole time yeah i mean i generally I don't hit it nearly as much if I'm, like, interacting and talking to people. But it's, when I'm alone at home, I'm just, like, chain-smoking this. Do thing. you it's really? It's fucking terrible. It's crazy, especially it's when you're so, on your phone. You're just like... I think nicotine hijacks your brain a lot more aggressively than other things. I'm realizing I always want something. Like, I want to either drink the water <laughs> or I want to hit this. <laughs> He's just hitting it. Um, no, there's. A, I feel like part of that, I, I keep fidgeting with this. Yeah, like I want They're to be just... doing something constantly. My question is, how long does it take to break the need to be doing something? Mm. And I'm like, literally, nicotine must be the worst thing ever for meditating because the whole time you're just like... It's tough. I yeah. want something every 10 seconds, you know? But I mean, that's kind of the point of meditating, though. Is you can just <laughs> accept those thoughts and say, all right, that's something that's in my brain. I don't need to let that bother me. It is what it is. We out here. Yeah. I will say, as a, a product review for that vape, that is the worst vape I have ever done. It felt like it was Bro, like burning the, and putting juice on my tongue. It's the budget vape. I don't it's buy the it for vape. the quality. The very budget Same vape. It's the was $3 like, wine. Like, be frugal. When you're like, yeah, you can have Smoke a hit of it. Booze. I was so excited. I was like, oh, this is going to be delicious. And then I'm like, this will make me quit vaping. <laughs> but anyways, I've been, I've been taking Zens occasionally. We just like pop these suckers into your mouth. They, they kind of help. Oh, they're like the camel things it's yeah not chewing tobacco yeah there's no like tobacco and it's just like nicotine and some flavor and it's like see that's why do i like nicotine creepier is it because that's just the pure addiction at least when there's a history to chewing tobacco and smoking tobacco and it's a more but primal yours is like an comprehensive like thing breathing something in your lungs i'm like i'd rather have an addiction to like maybe fucking up my gun, gun i line. mean this is i cannot for the life of me think of why i started smoking this yeah because I, I wasn't a smoker I, I wasn't trying to quit cigarettes. <laughs> yes. I just started vaping. Yeah, it's like at one point I'm like, oh, that's a head rush. <laughs> and it was so easy to get a head rush that you're just like, yeah, at first it was oh, like just buy blast one. off every time. Every time. And now it's like occasionally you'll get like three in a row. You'll be like, oh my, someone called. Yeah. Or, or like just the first one of the day after yeah. you've woken up. I don't like vaping early in the day. Nicotine's like a nighttime activity for me. Heaven at night. But earlier in the day, it just makes me feel dry. I don't know if you ever feel that. So I've been noticing, most drugs make me feel dry now. Do you get that? Oh, yeah. They definitely, de the pretty much everything dehydrates. <laughs> everything. Why is everything dehydrating? Why is there no hydrating drugs? <laughs> That's called water. That's called water. But like, why can't I be like, oh, I took a bunch of ketamine and I'm just like, I don't have to drink water all tomorrow. Like, I'm just so <laughs> hydrated. <laughs> it's like, so like literally all drugs are just like, uh, I'm like crumpling up like that SpongeBob meme. <laughs> you know, I, I wonder if you could mix your drugs in with one of those hydration powders People make snorting hydration. <laughs> yeah. Just railing liquid so IV funny. with your ketamine. My genuine question is, if if I, ha I have no substances of any kind ever on me, um, but if I did, could I just like like do a drug on the show live? Because we're in Oregon, we're having one personal amount. The biggest thing would be, they, do they give me a $100 fine? Or mm. do I like say, oh, this isn't really that. I was just kidding. For the I think that would show. probably be fine. That's what I think, too. I'm like, oh, I think we can do drugs legally yeah. on air now. Because really, like if I remember my my constitution correctly, actually what I'm about to say sounds like it makes no sense. Don't state laws supersede federal laws a lot? Or like I have no idea. Any rights that are not exclusively given to the federal government are in the hands of the state. We're in weird, weird legal territory that I'm not qualified to speak on here. You? I was going to be a lawyer for a day. <laughs> I did want to be a lawyer at one point. Really? Yeah. Because it, it was when I, I'm very 
easily influenced. Yeah. Like whatever is directly in front of me has and a you huge. You got vaccinated. Right. Literally, it's probably from seeing it on Twitter and just the newspaper. Every fucking everywhere. But everywhere. That's what's making me not get it. So I'm like, I am sick of seeing people try to talk me into this. Yeah. The point I was getting to though was. It was when I was taking a First Amendment law class for journalism. Nice. And I got super into it. I got an A-plus in First Amendment law. Nice. And I, I was like, yo, this legal shit is fun. It's Let's just free let speech Let me be a law? lawyer. A whole class about free speech? Yeah. It was Probably. a lot of Supreme Court cases. Ugh, boring. Beautiful. So much fun to read. Was it? I'm yeah, like, that to like me. That sounds like a nightmare to me. I like arguing with people, but like the the... Adding bureaucracy to it, like literally the level of like, yeah, but does it follow this book that was written a couple hundred years ago and then updated three times? I'm like, who cares? Logically, I win. Like that would be so much funner of a court case if it was like, well, logically, who's in the right <laughs> and wrong? There are no numbers that you can like call back to, but it's like logically who wins this? It's like debate team kind of thing. Huh. One of the most interesting things about all, a lot of Supreme Court cases, and I think a lot of court cases in general is so much of the argument is just about whether or not one of the sides even deserves to be in court, whether they have standing to be in court. Really? Yeah. Some of the like most pivotal, pivotal free speech Supreme Court cases, 90% of the arguments was like, okay, does party A actually have legal recourse or legal standing to be taking this to court? Mm-hmm. And they argue about it for three weeks, and then they say, okay, yeah, you deserve to be here. Now let's make a decision about it. Weird. Yeah, they murdered someone. Did they though? <laughs> they may have, but does, does it deserve to be in court? The officer's name think, wrote his his I think name down a wrong. Different yeah, free speech. But then they're like a thing. Like I'm pretty sure uh, Cedric, who I guess thinking about, I literally just crossed my mind as I was like, oh yeah, Jeremy's gonna be the first one back. The most the first recent episode from the break is you and Cedric. But Cedric got pulled oh, yeah. over once, and the cop wrote wrote his name down wrong, and he didn't get in trouble at all for it. That's how I got out of trouble in high school. You too? Yeah. <laughs> I had a fake name. <laughs> Did you that, really? Anytime I got in trouble. Yeah, because they would just, they would have you sit in the office, and then they would say, all right, write your name down on this clipboard, and then we'll call your parents later. And I said, why the fuck would I put my actual name down yeah. for that? These, these administrators don't know me. Nice. I'm really thinking of if I ever do get in trouble, like, because you hand them the ID, and then they're like, they read it and write it down. I keep saying, like, yeah, I'm Tyler. Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. I say it like five times. They read over Tiger Gruber, and they really mm. quickly write Tyler Gruber. I'm like, it <laughs> may work. That's like, I mean, everyone thinks through like tons of plans. Like, oh, what would I do if I got in a fight? What would I do if I got pulled over? Mm. That's my pullover plan. Interesting. <laughs> my L- fight lie. plan is to run. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a solid fight plan. No, my fight plan, because I got one of those knives that eventually will be here. The butterfly knife isn't my real knife. Eventually, I want to get a ballistics one where it's like you have a knife and it actually shoots out. Like, those oh, yeah. are, again, <laughs> legal in Oregon. Those are legal in Oregon. I'm pretty sure almost Yo. everything is legal in Oregon except knives that are like beyond like 5.5 inches. So as long as it's like below that, maybe ballistics knives were illegal here. But we I was have actually, very lax laws. I was hanging out in the skate park at like 3 a.m. one time, mm-hmm. and I made friends with these random kids who were sitting in the bottom of the bowl. And one of them had like an 8-inch knife Jesus. that he was just sharpening. Well, <laughs> weird. Ken's and his and friends that. were chatting. Uh, Kenzie and I were literally just walking down like that. That that it's like a triangle between Blair and Fort, uh, Blair and one other street. There was literally someone sharpening oh, yeah. a machete, and when we came to for here, like an hour. for an hour, we went and got food. He was still sharpening it. We saw a cop walk over and talk to him. He was just like, so like, this is my job. This is my job is to talk to this. Got to talk person. to the machete guy. Dude, living in town is so depressing. To the point I'm like, Kenzie, can we drive somewhere to go on a walk? Because you walk around town, like people are muttering to themselves, like mm. all these different things. Where I'm like, whoa, I lived in a bubble. I do yeah, not like not living in the bubble. Don't look away. You you have to acknowledge it and accept Why? it. Why? Because it's a part of life. Suffering and evil and death. Like it's, it's things we all have Oregon. to contend with at one point. And it's a part of Portland. When we went up to the raceway uh, in Portland, like we spent the night there and we're like, Hey, we're hungry, let's just go out and get some food. At like two in the morning. At like two in the morning. We drove like around to a couple of places. We saw a coyote. Yes. Running around on the streets. We someone offered sex for money. Someone said you could be my pimp to the person we were with. Sketchy, weird situation. It was just like why are it's Portland like this, and then all of us were pretty much like, "Oh, we're never gonna live in Portland." Because of the communism. Because of the communism, <laughs> it's gotta be. Yeah, man, the free, the whole free market debate versus like the socialism aspect of things. I'm like, man, whichever one I listen to longer it makes a really compelling point. No, neither of them is completely right or completely possible. Yeah, but like the one, like same with like the conservative subreddit. Like when Trump was being impeached or whatever, the whole thing went down. Like I was like, okay, let me just give the conservative subreddit like 20 minutes of my time. I'm like. They're pretty convincing over there. Like, maybe they're not right. And then you look at the left wing and you're like, 
they're so dialed into human psychology, like they know how to trick you to the mm-hmm. point where I'm like, and whatever side I'm paying attention to for one day can convince me of something. It's just interesting to be aware of that. Like you said, you're influential, easily influenced. Yeah. What some some might mean? say gullible. You're gullible. I think we're all surprisingly gullible because like up until that time, I'm like, I don't think I'm gullible. And I'm like, oh, I should just stay out of um, news altogether because I'm just on whatever side I am surrounded by the most. Like if yeah. luckily Kenzie and I are both not really political, but I'm like, if I live with a political person, would I eventually just give in to them to get them to shut up? Like it'd be like living with a religious person with how much they're just like, no, this is right. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, it'd give me a headache. I mean, I think that happened to some extent with my last serious relationship what do you do <laughs> <laughs> no I mean, she was just very like woke pc progressive type Ugh. and i guess i i Ugh. i grew up in that too to a big extent my parents are very much the same yeah i will say dirt balls are good enough that i'm gonna eat a third one this show i pro- I'll, I'll keep You've one up on already? the wall yeah nice. but i don't think i'm gonna give them to guests because people will just eat a whole one honestly kids are gonna have one too they definitely make it harder to speak um, yeah. I mean, like I, I, I said this in the text. You don't need to eat them on air. Yeah, we're not going to eat them on air. You can just have them in the studio and then people say, what, what the fuck's a dirt ball? Yeah, or I'll have like one with a ribbon on it and just be like, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> just for like at the end of every episode. It's our display dirt You ball. come, you get some death water, you get a CBD joint, and then some Tolius hemp, and you get one dirt ball. Yeah, have you people ever seen what the fuck? those things where they take random objects and cast them in clear epoxy? Yes. We could do that with a dirt ball. That would be a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> Especially if you shaped it like something, like an actual like dick made of dirt balls, epoxy it. That would be an art piece. Cool. Epic. And then like you I'm round the side it. so it rolls around. Then I can start a like a sex toy <laughs> side hustle with the dirt balls. Inside How about this? <laughs> One dirt ball every inch of this table, and we make the table an inch higher. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the entire thing Genius. is just covered by an inch of dirt balls and epoxy. You could hang that in a museum. I'm pretty sure I've seen something like that in a museum. Someone already commissioned me to make them one of this table. Literally Damn. just from a picture of it. So I'm like, whoa. Because most people who see this are like, wow, that's a cool Charge table. Charge them a lot of money. This is six, $700 job. Wow. I would say. You know the way I was going to do it? It's funny. I talked about it on Mark's episode. I'm going to say pay the price of the epoxy and the paint, which is like 150 bucks, And then what you pay me, decide in one year from now. So however much you enjoy the product. Oh, then so put a dollar price on that, and that'll be the commission. You pay me in one year from today. So it's like, you don't use it at all? It's okay. You don't owe me anything. Like, I just spent a day of my day. It's, it's not the end of the world. That's but if cool. you really that's enjoyed it, you know? That's a much more compassionate I think so, way too. to approach it. I think some people might be, like, really pissed. Like, no, just let me pay for it and be done with it. Because you are kind of, like, <laughs> keeping something in your mind. But I'm like, just set a one-year. Mm. Every time you use the table, think, like, add add some money to it. Be like, oh, I really enjoy this, you know? And then if it dents or scratches, you could be like, it's a sack of shit table. Glad I didn't spend a fuck ton of money on it. Yeah. And, and you can also put cameras inside it so you can actually see how much they enjoy it. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Every minute you spend at this table, I add a grand. <laughs> yeah, it's like the thing you signed isn't as nice as I made it seem. Dude. <laughs> Imagine your friend tries to buy a table f- from you and you give them like an 80 page contract. Oh <laughs> We, but they already paid for it, and you already <laughs> made it for them. Yeah, just sign this. Like, do I really have to read through this whole thing? And, like, there are a couple clauses that unless they cross it out, you, like, hold them to it. You're like, no, I get to use your house whenever I need to. Yeah, contract law is another thing that's very interesting. Because literally, at least in the state of Oregon, pretty much any form of written agreement between two people is a legally binding contract. Oh. Even if I just write some shit on a piece of paper, slide it over to you, legally binding. If we agree to something in an email, that's a legally binding contract. Weird. Like, I have to sign it. Like, that piece of paper you slide over to me. If I sign it or if I look at it and say, yeah. Yeah. Which one? No, if you... <laughs> <laughs> sign it or say, yeah. Sorry, the CBD got to me. <laughs> no, See what I mean? You, I'm like, CBD is my friend of episode. Okay, it, yeah. It's a written contract. Yeah. And again, people, I am a licensed attorney. Well, Call me for legal advice. <laughs> so what if I grab your signature? Because my signature is literally just a scribble and or a dash line. Because then I'm like, you See, know. that's what I... That's like, just I don't a have straight a, line? It's that's a, a weird line. Like, thing. I don't have a that's, signature. that's technically a signature. But how, how can you prove that that's your Exactly. Line? That's the joy of it. Sometimes people are like, no, we actually need like a, like a legible name. I'm like, okay, what the, the, the cursive, going back to like third grade, wasting all the time. But no, like, I mean, like, I just hold up a picture of my signature. I just write it. I don't even think I have a pen in here. I just literally write it down like, all right, this is what it looks like if you want to forge anything. Zoom in, enhance. Speaking of, 
I'm not having guests sign anything anymore. Normally, I remember you, mm. you came on the show three or four times. I'd have people sign something every time. Oh, yeah, the non... Yeah, not, I don't even remember what it was. It was pretty much just like, hey, I can use this forever, and if you die, I get to use it. Like, your kids can't say, hey, take that down, because it's, um, it's you know, mm. a video of my dad talking about gargling balls or something. And it's <laughs> like, I'm no, I just get to be like, nope, I get to keep that audio up, which no one ever used. No One, one friend, and I mean, I guess maybe I told you, Jonathan uh, had yeah. me take down. So I've only ever taken down one episode, and it was before the next one came out, so I got to, like, backdate the next episode. So it worked out well, but I'm like, what do I do if in, like, a year from now, I've, I'm up to episode 300, and you come on, you say, hey, remove episode 114, because I, I don't like the way you talked about me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, do I just remove it and just miss an episode? That would fucking suck. But I'm going to have faith that that doesn't come up and just not have people sign anything. Yeah, I can't imagine a situation where I would ever do that. Not you, but there's a lot yeah. of weird, meticulous people out there, you know? i got to watch my back. Yeah, I suppose when I go around encouraging people to call me dirtball, that... That says a lot of what you need to know about my Kinda reputation does, management. It? It's always this weird thing. I'm like, should I call him Jeremy? I'm like, I'll call him Dirtball. He hasn't ever corrected me. Like, when people have multiple names, like, for a while there, I kept calling my grandma grandma, and everyone's like, call her Lori. And I'm like, I just, like, blatantly asked her. I'm like, do you mind what I call you? She's like, no, grandma's cool. I'm like, people are so headspacey about problems. They're like, well, a problem's bound to exist in life, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm like, people are suspicious when things are going too well. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah. There's always something lurking around the corner. That's me as well. Like, literally the day before, uh, so everyone who knows or probably doesn't know, uh, you came over, you tried out a FUV, not a Roadster. Yeah. And the, Fun utility the TikTok got, like, 20,000 views, which is, like, I'm a super awesome and helpful. Now. He's a tech influencer. How is it as a vehicle? <laughs> it's really cool. I want to drive it more because yeah. it, it was just weird. The steering felt kind of weird. Yeah, you get used to the how The controls hard. are different than a car, totally. so you got to get used to it. Yeah. But it was really fun. It's I was surprised fun. by how fast it was and how stable it felt. Yeah. And I feel like if I had, like you were talking about, some kind of country roads or a big racetrack or thing. something to drive around yeah. in. Driving it um, for fun of, like, testing out a vehicle is not fun when you have two cars that you don't want to scratch. And it's not your vehicle, so you don't want to wreck it. It's, like, yeah. so much fear I definitely in almost it. ran into a truck. Yeah. Like, there's a <laughs> lot of fear in driving a vehicle, like, in town. But if you're on a country road, you're like, oh, it's a vehicle. Like, you can rev it and stuff. That's a lot of fun. But I'm like, I, they honestly need test facilities that are out of town so people can, like, drive out and rent it for a day, like, not near anyone. Because they have a rental facility right around here. Um, and I think they're starting up in, like, every state. Kenzie and I are sl- going to slow roll it up. We're going to be like, you know what you guys really need is someone in Hawaii to help <laughs> to help the, the company really take off there. And then we'll live in Hawaii for the rest of our lives. I don't know how <laughs> we're going to get the table over there. <laughs> the real secret. Like, we just look around at, like, Portland and then we look at Eugene. Float. Doesn't it float? <laughs> just a raft. Yeah, we're just Titanic the whole way over there. Yeah. Um, the water's pretty warm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it would just be... It's just It's just much like you're like, you have to look at the dark side of life. I'm like, I'm tired of it, man. It's been a year of like anywhere online, you see a lot of negative and like heartbreaking stuff. And then you see in real life, like my like solace was, oh, but I walk outside and it's like a sunny day. Now that I live in town, it's like, oh, I walk outside and I see three people who like need help. Like, literally just need help. Yeah, like, totally. I'm like, they should be, like, removed from society to test or something. But Get I don't something know what useful out of them. Like, yeah. You, you got two kidneys, you're on the streets. But what do you need is, two kidneys for? I don't mean that, but I'm like, <laughs> hey, this person, should I take a picture, a video? Like, this guy's always on this corner. He's literally just, like, talking out loud. And everyone, like, walks, like, eight feet around him. I'm like, mm. why does no one come get this guy? He needs help. He's just going to end up in prison when he accidentally does the wrong thing. But it's like, woof. Eugene, you're heading awfully close to Portland. You're towing the line. Yeah, I mean, the whole country is crumbling. Crumbling. Really. Crumbling. And well, when you maybe, tell boomers this, they're like, no, go get a job. Well, and those like, boomers <laughs> should read the fourth turning, because we're in the fourth turning right now. Was that like one of those uh, Hindu things about how now we're in the Krishna phase? Yeah, basically the really? same thing. Cool. Like, so, it's a historical theory that history goes in approximately 100-year cycles split up into four periods called turnings mm. and the fourth one is the crisis mm. period right. we have 25 years of this yeah well it's it started it's in fun. 2008 mm. this crisis period so we're pretty well into it cool we're what, like 13 years in Dope. yeah halfway through the crisis but so yeah uh, it's only gonna get worse it's only gonna get crazier and then it's gonna get awesome and cool. hopefully we're still alive yeah it's gonna be actual flying cars and food replicator machines and it's kind of annoying that the year started in 2008 not 2000 to 2025 like it doesn't like it's kind of like when you're like you're doing volume in like a sinking or five mm-hmm. or ten 
It's like they started the hundred years. Like, so the next one will be in two thousand one hundred and eight, not two thousand one hundred. Well, so this it's makes obnoxious. you think. When did time actually doesn't start? make me think? It makes because me mad. <laughs> 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 no, because the, this whole Gregorian calendar nonsense. Yeah. Completely arbitrary. Yeah, it's like Christianity is. That's not real. I, yeah. I mean, my understanding was well, that you can add a ten thousand <laughs> to it, and that's like since human evolution. So it'd be like twelve thousand and twenty-one is like roughly since humans kind of started evolving, mm-hmm. which makes sense. But even if that was when Jesus died, yeah, like there's no indication that Jesus dying would be so significant that that would be like the defining global event. Be weird. Nice. We hit one hour. Shut the fuck up and hey, get out of here. <laughs> suck <laughs> my dirty balls. The end of the episode. I'm like, hey, let me know like when half an hour is. I was like, kept looking at my watch. Her visually one. I'm out of here. I was like, I was like, I was gonna cut it kind of close, but yeah. All right, that was a blast. All right, so you're capping these out in an hour now? Capping them. Interesting. I was just starting to talk about Jesus. That's when things yeah, get good. We, we, no, we can, go, we can go on a little bit. More than anything, I ran out of water. I kind of want to go get another, but I'll hold up. I'll hold up. Finish your, finish your Jesus story. No, that was pretty much it. I, I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I, threw, I threw a little bit of shade at Jesus. Fuck, fuck Jesus. <laughs> no, I've actually been reading the Bible a lot lately. Been getting back in touch with God. Let me. You know what would be kind of funny? is to pay a gay porn creator to make one with Jesus getting railed. <laughs> oh, I guarantee you, there's probably hundreds of videos probably does of Jesus just, getting we're railed. We're just sending that to there's so many religious people There's probably like 10 being made in town right now. It would be so enjoyable just to know how much people believe in it, and just having that just be like, oh, these people. It's you know, fun to make people kind of mad. Why is it? You know they've thought about it. <laughs> Who's thought about it? Jesus? People? Yeah, you know they've thought about like grabbing that that holy anointed dick <laughs> or the ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> your <laughs> I'm not fucking around. I go straight to business. That's so funny. Yeah, I guess you probably don't fuck people or get fucked and pull the, pull their ponytail. So anyway, <laughs> now that we finished talking about fucking Jesus, that's a good good solid wrap up in the show. Kenzie, hit the gong. Gong, 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 gong. gong. <laughs> And we're out. Tight. Dope. We're going to start ending every episode talking about fucking Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>